The Browns loss yesterday has caused a lot of disturbance as far as in the fans' frustration with the team and how they were projected to be a contending team this year and so forth. Now, the uproar, in my opinion, I think it's a little exaggerated. And I say that because there's a few people saying that they're, I mean, literally, they're they're going as far as saying Nick Chubb should be traded. Get him out now because it's not fair to him how this team has been such a disappointed, disappointment this year. And then there's a lot of people who say that Kevin Stefanski needs to be fired. And then there's others saying Joe Woods needs to be fired. Now, Joe Woods, me personally, I'm totally against people getting fired. We all got to eat out here. That's why. We all got families. Well, most of us got families. We got to keep food on the table, keep a roof over our heads, and all and so forth. Cars for transportation and so forth. Uh, the bare necessities. We have to have a job or some sort of income coming in in order for us to provide our families or ourselves with things like that. But that's a different, that's a different topic. But getting back to the Browns, there's people who say Joe Woods should be fired. Now, again, I'm not justifying Joe Woods being fired, but I can relate to why people feel this way because the defense has just been atrocious. It's been atrocious. And my reasons for that is I, I said I had did a, a topic this morning. I spoke on why I feel that's the that's the issue, why the defense has been so atrocious. I I contribute that to um, them, and like I said, I could be wrong, but I would like to think, if not all the starters, most of the starters didn't play in these preseason games this year. So I, I would like to think none of the Brown starters play. And for reasons why, I don't know. I think it's the fear of injury. I think that's that's reason. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the fear of injury to their key starters and star players. But I just think it's a chemistry problem. Um, uh, I think they. I think this. I think the defense has been so bad because of, of chemistry problems. And I, I. I don't know. I consider these games. What five games in? I consider these games to be like the Browns. You know, deep Browns defense preseason games. So I mean, hey, who who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll catch a stride. And the defense play consistently for like five games in a row, and maybe then we'll you know get to see the defense that the Browns players, I'm sorry, the Browns fans and you know most analysts and most sports you know sports people you know actually view the Browns as as being one of the elite defenses in the game and being you know and it, excelling them to you know being a contender. For, for the Super Bowl. So m maybe they'll catch a stride like that and then, okay, Joe Wood's job be safe. But, I mean, if this trend continues where they're letting guys, like, what's his name, Austin Ecker or something like that, um, the running back from the Chargers, this dude ain't had a decent run, run you know, a decent game like that all season. But the, here, here they come, and they come to Cleveland, and this guy rushes for 173 yards, and I think he scored a touchdown, too. They had over 200 yards rushing the Chargers as a team. So, and keep in mind, they, the Chargers were dead last in rushing. So, how how does that happen? The only thing I can think of is this, they don't have no chemistry. Could it be Joe Woods drawing up defensive schemes? Could it be that, you know, whatever, he's playing a 4-3 or was that cover three or whatever, um, um, and just so happened the scheme, whatever that scheme is, he drawing up, it's just, you know, the the um, offense picking it up or the quarterback picks it up and he alter, you know alternates out of play and changes it up. And then this is how the offense is getting these chunk plays on the Browns. Um, is it because... Joe Woods is just, you know, 
just just maybe maybe, maybe Joe Woods might have to retire after this year. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't know if he's just not you know thinking. I don't know if he's trying. You know I don't know if he's precise what his his schemes. I I can't I cannot figure it out. I don't get it. Like, like I said, on the outside looking in, it looks like he don't care. That's what it looked like to me. It looks like he don't care. And then, yeah, you can even say some games, it looks like Kevin Stefanski don't care. But, again, I don't think Kevin Stefanski needs to be fired. No, I don't think his job should be in jeopardy right now. I don't think his job should be anywhere near, you know, somebody wanting to give him his, his, uh, his uh, writing papers and, what's that, determination papers, I'm sorry. Determination papers. They no, no, he ain't he ain't on that level yet. Nowhere near it. So, but yeah, there's some games Kevin Savansky look like he don't care. There's some games he call that that's head scratchers too. Make you be like, what is you doing? But for Joe Woods, it's it's just been a disaster as far as him being uh you know, as far as him leading the defense. This season, it's just been a disaster so far. So, um, basically, for me, I mean, the fans calling for him to be fired. Like I said, I'm not justifying it, but I can relate because I understand their frustration. It is frustration. I'm sorry, it is frustrating to watch the Browns on defense play at the level that we know they're not capable of. now. To air to to maybe Joe Woods defense maybe he just don't have the talent that we all thought he had maybe he just don't have it we already know what we gonna get from Miles Garrett we already know what we gonna get from Javadian Clowney we already know what we gonna get from Denzel Ward now Grant Delpit and John Johnson okay these guys been playing like trash all season two so they can't tackle. They constantly get burned left, this literally, left on the field. They, it's it's like they literally don't have a clue what's going on when the, when, the, when, when, the, when, the deep, when the offense hikes the ball. It's like they don't have a clue what's going on out there. So I guess you could say that because just because of these two guys playing like trash this season, maybe that's why the defense is so horrendous looking, if that makes sense. So you could probably – Almost defend Joe Woods and say, "Hey, look, I got these two right here on the back end, and they 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 just they're just not as good as I thought they were. So we need to fix this issue either this year or next year. So I, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know. You can maybe blame those two, but I mean, yeah, they have not, not now. John Johnson the third and Greg Delper, I haven't seen them make any plays this year." Not one. I have not seen him make not one play. Not one play. I have not seen him make not one play. I ain't seen him even lay like a hit or make somebody pay for catching a ball or running the ball. I haven't seen anything like that this year either. There's a lot of people saying that too, and I agree with them. I haven't seen no, no play. Matter of fact, I haven't seen no plays made from the defense. Now, maybe to Miles Garrett's, you know, defense, I think he's being held. And for some odd reason, the referees are not calling. But, okay. Like I said, Miles Garrett is still Miles Garrett. We know what we're going to get from him. So, and then, okay, of course, Javadin and Clowney was injured. So that played a key factor. But I really think it's a chemistry problem. So, yeah, for, I, like, it. If they fire Joe Woods, they fire him. I'll say it like this at the end of the season. I'm not going to say he deserve it. I'm not going to be the guy like most people are. And I understand this is a sport. I understand it's a job. And I understand if you don't perform, you know, if you, I understand if you don't perform at a certain level within your place of employment, yeah, you're going to get fired. It's just, that's just how it is. That's how the world is. So, I mean, if he gets fired, he gets fired. But I, but me, I just, like I said, I can't advocate. I'm not going to advocate. But if he gets fired, it's no skin off my back if it makes sense. 
Now back to the Browns and this, you know, people being so pessimistic about their season and about how they just look like a team that's not a good team. For me, they after everything that happened in the game yesterday, they still had a chance to win. As bad as the Browns have been playing this season, they've been in every game. The Browns should at least be 4-0. Quiet's kept. Quiet's kept. The Browns should be 4-0. But, okay, it, for me, this season, it, that's a sign to me that's telling me basically that they just, like I said, they, like I said, you can say on offense they don't have no, you know, they, the chemistry is a little off, but it's not, you know, too far off like the defense is. But, um, yeah, that's a sign telling me that basically this this team is just not clicking right now. They're not clicking because the mistakes they're making is like 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 grade school like level mistakes. I mean, you make these mistakes in Pee Wee football that the Browns are making. It, it just don't make no sense of the mistakes they're making. Sometimes they make mistakes on offense. Sometimes they make mistakes on well, they make a lot of mistakes on defense. But so the the the, the, the um, offense, the, the mistakes on offense is like, wow, why would you do that? Like, the play call against the Falcons was like, like, what are you doing? Like, like it was just on a level of, you know, just basically being clueless out there, like. If you're gonna if you're gonna go for it on fourth and two, draw up a play or get just get a ball in the chub. Get a ball in the chub if you're gonna go for it. Me personally, I, in that situation, I'd have took the three points. But okay, they they didn't do it against the Falcons, so that's why they lost that game. It, it's just the little it's the, it's the little mistakes that's that's just coming back to just basically. Annihilate the Browns at the end of the game. It's like mistakes that's just like can be avoided. Literally, the mistakes. It's like self-inflicted mistakes. It's not like the defense is doing anything to make the make the Browns make these mistakes on offense. It's just basically self-inflicted. So a lot of that is going on with the Browns' offense this season, and then. You combine that with how hor hor horrific the defense has been playing this season. You just it's it's just a it's just a team right now that's just not clicking. They're not clicking. And at the end of the day, they should be they should be 4-0. They should have been 4-0. But okay, that's what happens when you don't play with consistency. This is this is what this is if anything, this is a good example of what happens when you don't have consistency in anything. I'm talking about anything. So the Browns are two and three because of their inconsistencies on offense and defense, but mostly on defense. So they're two and three, but they should have easily won against the dang Chargers last, um, yesterday. But of course, Kate York missed a lot of kicks. I think he missed a chip shot. And then he turned around, had a chance to redeem himself. Then he missed a 54 yard field goal. Keep in mind, he made a 58-yarder the first game against the Panthers. He was the hero that game, but now he is up to, to turn out to be the Scrooge in the game because he missed a 54-yard field goal. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the Browns is 2-3. and three. Yeah, the Ravens won last night. So what? Ravens leading the division now, of course. Okay. I like to think the Browns in second place. So, okay. If the Browns win this Sunday, they'll be a 3-3, three and three, right? Okay, now check this out. If the Ravens lose this Sunday, they'll be what? 3-3. Three, th three and three. But I don't think they play this Sunday. I'm sorry, they played Monday. They might play Sunday, I don't know. But if, if the Ravens play this Sunday and they lose, they'll be 3-3. Three and three. And the Browns win, they'll be 3, what's that, 3-3. Three and three. Which means the Browns will be back in first place. Oh, my fault, I forgot about the Bengals. If the Bengals play this Sunday, they win with the Bengals lead the division. At the end of the day, it seems like the direction the AFC is going for me is that it's, 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 going, it's going to come down to that one game 
of the season. That's what it seems like to me. I could be wrong about it, but it just seems like the direction the AFC is going is it's going to come down to one game. And whoever wins that game, whether it be the Browns, the Bengals, the Ravens, hey, you might even have to sneak and throw the Steelers up in there. Who knows? But I think it's going to come down to one game, and whoever wins that one game will win the AFC division, and they'll get a, what, playoff berth in a whole game. So the Browns are still in it. The Browns are still in it. What the Browns need to do is they need to just get it together. They got to – they, they have to quit playing with all these in, inconsistencies. They have to stop playing like that. They have to put forth a game plan from now on, and they have to make sure that that game plan is executed to almost perfection. They have to put themselves in position to win these football games, especially when they're close. They got to put themselves in position to win these games. The coaches, now this, yeah, you can put this on Stefanski. This is Stefanski's job. You're the head coach. Why are you having these type of issues? The head coach's job is to be a leader of men. The head coach's job is to make sure everybody is held accountable when they making mistakes when the game is close. The head coach is supposed to be upset that they're losing these type of games like that, where the, the, the mistakes are self-inflicted, and if you don't make these self-inflicted mistakes, you will win the game. It's that simple. The head coach is supposed to be upset about this. He's supposed to be doing drills, punishing people, fighting them, whatever it takes to get these guys to stop making these stupid, dumb mistakes like that. It's just that simple. That's where I fault Kevin Stefanski at. So Stefanski has got to step his game up, come up with better game plans, more efficient game plans. And when these guys make them type of mistakes, hold them accountable. Hold, if you got to bitch somebody, bitch them. Put a guy in there that's going to at least try. Don't keep playing this guy who... It's playing like trash. It's just that simple. He's playing like trash. Why are you keeping him out there? Put a guy in there if you have to. Bitch this dude. If you have to bitch two or three of them, do it. But put somebody in there that's going to try. It's that simple. That's Stefanski's job. That's what Stefanski has to do. So, yeah. Some of this falls on Stefanski as far as in putting his team in positions to win these games. So going forward, this is Stefanski's job. He's got to do a better job of putting his team in positions to win these close football games. It's just that simple. This is what we're in the market for, to win football games and win enough of these football games in order for us to win the ultimate prize, the Super Bowl.